to get David Long back out there and um, what do you anticipate his role maybe being? Yeah, it's good to see him back out here running around. Uh, I mean, we'll kind of see as the week goes where he's at um, with his injury, working his way back and see what he can do do for us as the week goes. So we'll kind of get an idea here probably today and tomorrow and see where it's at for him to contribute on Sunday. It's a long time. You didn't have enough inside backers. Now you've got you're getting healthy there. A good problem to have, figuring out where to make all those guys fit. Yeah, man, great problem to have, right? Um, never have enough good players. So excited about all of them and what they bring. I think they're all a little bit different in what they bring, um, but gives us a little bit of a multiplicity of how we can use them um, as it see fits. And we'll see once we get Jay, uh, Jay on back. He's on COVID right now and see where this thing goes with David. But uh, excited about the group. What's the toughest thing, you know, when, when a guy is out for that length of time, like like David Long, what's the toughest thing to, to come Yeah, back? I think uh, it's important for those guys to stay engaged. Like everything kind of changes as the season goes, right? We're making adjustments defensively. Um, Obviously, different offenses, making sure you're clued in to kind of how things are going that way. Um, but I think staying engaged with, with the plan, with the scheme, um, all the little things we tweak throughout the season, making sure he's up to speed on that. And then ultimately, just getting back out on the field and doing it, seeing it, repping it, um, being able to, when you can't take it from the classroom to the field, like that's a big part of the learning process. So um, just being able to get back out there and do it. What are the No, go ahead. Uh, just to follow on that. Uh, in addition to that, I guess new personnel as well with, with Zach Cunningham coming in. That yeah, it, it's, it's, it's very similar. I think the uh, one thing with the injured guy is they have a pretty sound base level of what's going on, and they, the terminology aspect's always a big thing with a new guy where somebody that's injured and coming back, it's, it's a little bit different because they're familiar and they kind of understand things. It's more just catching up on the little tweaks that we do. Um, where a new guy, it's... It's a lot, like it is. You, you get thrown a lot at you in a hurry because, I mean, most new guys, when they join a team, they're expected to play pretty quickly. Like, they're not joining to sit on the bench and get warm and get adjusted. Like, they got to go, right? So um, I think just the, the work ethic that you have to have coming in, um, the amount of time it takes with your coach, uh, with the other players learning. Uh, but terminology has always been the biggest thing. I mean, we say it all the time, like scheme is scheme. Everybody does a lot of the same stuff throughout the league as you watch. Um, it's more just the terminology, how you can relate it relate it to the player based on where they've been or what they've done. The biggest challenge is that process that terminology and play so fast. Because, you know, you guys all swarm to the football, yeah. but it seems like he's there first most of the time. Yeah, I think he's been locked in. I mean, he's a he's an instinctive player anyway. Um, I mean, he's always had a knack for finding the football. I think he freaking led the league in tackles last year, was up there. Um, so the biggest thing with him, I think, is as long as he's comfort, comfortable pre-snap and he's able to get lined up, then he then he just go play. Like we always talk about, the thinking should happen pre-snap, and there's some things you got to be able to adjust and react to once the ball snap. But as long as we're lined up and we got our eyes in the right spot and focusing on the right things, like when that ball snap, we got to go play and make tackles or rush the passer or defender receiver, whatever that might be. What are the biggest challenges that come into play when, when you're going up against a left-handed quarterback like Tua? Obviously, defensive guys are kind of used to maybe playing against one type of quarterback when the guy's throwing from the other hand. Maybe how does that change yeah, for the guys up front and then in the back end? Too? It is definitely unique. Um, I mean, up front, we always talk about matching the hand, and more times than not, it's a right-hand quarterback, and we're sticking our left hand up to try to mirror the throwing hand, um, where now that's totally different, right? Like talking about sticking your right arm up, which we don't do very often, right? There's just certain situations. So, I mean, I think that's dramatic. Uh, I think just the understanding of who he is, like you go back to talking about some of these other quarterbacks and it's like, keep them away from their throwing arm, right? When they're escaping, like that's, it's always a thing with every quarterback and that's a little bit different, right? Obviously he's going the other way than, than most of these right-handed quarterbacks. So there's some little nuances to it. I don't, in terms of the back end, I mean, he's an accurate passer, whether you're right-handed or left-handed, the ball is going to be in the spot, you know? So I don't know how much it truly affects those guys in terms of playing the ball. Um, back there, I do like when they're blitzing and rushing, it kind of correlates that way, just the same as the front. Or a very dynamic passing game. Sorry, Terry. I'm sorry. sorry. But uh, they don't appear to be a very dynamic passing attack, but yet Waddle's a guy with almost 100 catches. How, how creative are they with how they use him and how 
tough is he to prepare? Yeah, I think they're doing a really good job uh, getting him in positions where he can make plays for him. You see him lined up everywhere. He's in the backfield. Uh, they're motioning him to build things, to get him in different spots. Um, I think they're doing a really good job being creative with him and finding touches for him. Um, it's going to be a big challenge for us, like just not only finding and locating him and where he's at, but the communication that comes with that and then ultimately being able to cover him, right, which is – probably the hardest part, right? Um, so it's going to be a challenge for us. We get, we got to be prepared for it. We got to expect it. We got to, we can't be caught off guard by it in any situation. Um, and we'll kind of see where it goes come Sunday with, with what they're trying to do. When you're looking at and evaluating the play of the guys on the nose like Tart or Naquan, and they don't necessarily compile a lot of tackles and stats and sacks themselves, but do you does their success kind of reflect if the inside linebackers and the defensive ends have a, have a lot of good plays that you know they're doing their job? Yeah, I think it, I think it definitely plays a role in uh, the success of those guys uh, in the middle and then obviously on the outside as well. Um, I think anytime you're looking at those guys inside, like it's a dirty position. Like they're taking on multiple guys, um, play after play, right? Um, and I think it goes back with when you're trying to evaluate them, it's a lot of technique and fundamentals. Like, were you able to stay square in the run game, right? Were you able to get some push in the pass rush, even if the result isn't there? Because it's all about in the run game, staying square and kind of shrinking some of those windows or keeping guys off from climbing up to the second level. And you, you see a lot of that. Like, when we're able to set the edge like we should and we can stay square and play on guys and not let them climb, like, those windows shrink, and that's when a lot of that production either comes for the end or even the nose, right? Because those backers don't really have a window to fill. Um, but I think when really looking at those guys, like you've got to really look at what they're doing, playing and play out fundamentally, technique-wise, all the things we're preaching. I heard a couple analysts describe uh, Zach Cunningham's playing style as, as violent uh, in, in a good way. Uh, I wonder if you'd agree with that, and, and if that's the case, if that kind of adds to a defense's you know swagger or mentality or. Whatever you want to call yeah, I would. I would uh, definitely agree with it. I think he uh, arrives in an angry mode with some intention, um, and he's long. He's a good tackler. Like that's the thing about him. He can be a little bit more aggressive on some of those tackles because he's so long. He can recover if he does try to get juked. He's got some length to capture him, right? Um, so, I mean, it's been a been an asset for us. The one thing also, I think he tries to hit people in the passing game. Like, you see him try to collision guys with some violence in the passing game, which is uh, a huge part of it. Um, but, yeah, it definitely adds some sway. I mean, anytime there's a big hit, those guys get fired up. I think it adds an element to kind of what we're doing, and they get it, it brings some excitement and some energy to the group. To mirror the tight ends, he's had success against Kelsey and then last week against Kittle. Is that something you guys kind of knew that he had – from the get-go, or is that something that's kind of developed of late in his game? Yeah, I think a combination of both. Like, he's coming out, he's a big, strong kid who could run, right? So we kind of knew he was going to be able to do some different things. He played nickel in college, so, like, he's he's got some versatility to do a lot of things, whether it's playing in the back end, whether it's moving into sub-linebacker, whether it's covering tight ends. Like, he's, he's done all of that. Um, and I think he's developed. I think that's kind of grown. I think his confidence has grown too with being able to do it and go out there and do it in games against some of the better tight ends in the league. Um, just ultimately, he's made the most of his opportunities. When he's been called in to go do something, he's he's been able to go do it with effectiveness. And hopefully he does have some confidence from it and it can carry forward to whenever we, we need him again. You guys obviously have a, a lot of depth at inside linebacker, but with David coming back, maybe what what element does he bring that's unique or kind of bring that that's kind of been missing with with him out? Yeah, I mean, uh, we'll see. I don't know if he's going to be back. We got to see where these next couple of days go with him. Um, I mean, I'm not going to commit to that by any stretch of the imagination. So, but he was always instinctive. He made plays. He was he's got some instincts in the passing game as well. Um, the triggers in the run game. I mean, I, I don't know if I'd say anything's really been missing as much as what it, what he brings is a little bit different. Um, but he was having a good year for us. He was. He was very productive. He was doing a lot, a lot of good things. I think he's taking the next step mentally in terms of his preparation and understanding of the game. Um, so it'll be good to kind of get him back worked in and kind of see where it goes from there. 
You talked about swagger and confidence that the defense plays with. How, where does that show up as far as playmaking ability? And when you think back to last year, where some guys now who are more confident, more aggressive, maybe tentative before. I mean, is it sh when you're having success, does the does that swagger kind yeah, of show I, up with play? I think. Uh... I think anytime you're struggling on defense, I mean, it even started a little bit last week against uh, San Fran, right? Anytime you're kind of struggling or on your, you're on your heels, um, you, not, you might not be as aggressive at any position, right? You're kind of looking everywhere. You're trying to figure out what the heck's going on. Um, and you're reeling, right? You're reeling a little bit where I think if, if you're having some success and you're building that confidence, we're in attack mode. Like we know, I, I hope our guys have gotten to the point now. I, I think it showed up last week where like, no matter what they do, like there's, it's never going to be perfect. They're going to make their plays too. They get paid just the same as we do. Um, everybody has good players. Um, but whenever things aren't going well, getting back to the base and our ability to respond and turn the page, I was really proud of the way the guys kind of did that last week. After obviously Rabbit's play was huge, um, but I think you've seen it, like some fourth down stops down in the red zone, um, some of those types of things. But I think just the ability to respond, the confidence to go out there and understand, hey, it, it ain't going great right now, but we're going to get this thing turned around, um, and we were able to do that last week. So I think that's that's part of it.